I'm hoping this video won't take very long, um, but I just want to mention the gluconeogenesis allosteric regulation. So, pyruvate carboxylase is the first reaction of gluconeogenesis in which we take pyru pyruvate and turn it into oxaloacetate on its way back to becoming glu glucose. So, this the allosteric activator of pyruvate carboxylase is acetyl-CoA. So, high levels of acetyl-CoA activate pyruvate carboxylase. We haven't talked too much about acetyl-CoA just yet, but it's actually created from pyruvate um, when there's oxygen available so that acetyl-CoA can go on to the TCA cycle and later the electron transport chain. So why would acetyl-CoA or why would high levels of it activate pyruvate carboxylase and therefore activate gluconeogenesis? Acetyl-CoA is an indicator. It indicates that the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, whatever you want to call it, the TCA cycle and the electron transport chain, again both of these concepts which we'll talk about later, um, it indicates that these things are backed up. Essentially what's supposed to happen is acetyl-CoA is supposed to go through the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle, and eventually um, the NADHs and FADH2s that build up go to the electron transport chain. But if there's a bunch of acetyl CoA is going is 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 built up, that probably means that the TCA cycle is not cycling it all the way through. So the this the cycle and the electron transport chain are probably backed up. They're not going as to completion, or or they're not you know finishing up what they're supposed to do. So there's a bunch of acetyl CoA around. There's no sense in making more, right? So instead, what we would do is we would activate pyruvate carboxylase, which takes pyruvate, instead of being allowing pyruvate to be converted to acetyl-CoA, what it does is it takes those pyruvates and converts them into oxaloacetate on the way back to creating glucose. Okay, so in this case we want to just go ahead and take those pyruvates and instead of turning them into acetyl-CoA, we just go backwards and, and convert them into glucoses. So we activate the, the process of gluconeogenesis. Now what about fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase? It has two allosteric inhibitors, uh, the first one being high levels of AMP. So what is high, high levels of AMP? This, is, this indicates um, low energy, a low energy state. Right, so if we have low energy, then we want to make sure we're making energy. Right, so fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase is involved in gluconeogenesis, right, which is the process that stores glucose, right, or reforms glucose instead of breaks it down for energy. So high levels of AMP, what they want is they want, uh, they, they do not want uh, to be storing glucose. They want glucoses to be, break, be broken down so that we can create ATP. So uh, a low energy state would not favor glu gluconeogenesis and therefore inhibit the enzyme involved in gluconeogenesis. The second thing is high levels of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. If you recall, high levels of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate indicate a high um, concentration of glucose. Right, so if there's a lot of glucose around, then there's no sense in making more of it. Right, if there's a bunch of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, that means there's a bunch of glucose around. So we would inhibit the enzyme involved in the process that makes more glucose. So we don't, don't make more glucose. And if you recall, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is an activator of PF, uh, PFK1 in glycolysis. So here, um, it inhibits gluconeogenesis and activates glycolysis, which makes sense, right? Because you don't want both processes to be active at the same time. Why would you want to break down glucose and make glucose in the same cell at the same time? That just doesn't make sense. It seems counterproductive. Now, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase does have an activator, an allosteric activator, and that's high levels of ATP. And of course, this indicates a high energy state. So if we have a lot of energy around, let's just go ahead and store energy, right? So we would, we would, um, we would activate gluconeogenesis by activating fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. So in this case, we're, we have plenty of energy around, so store, store glucose. Okay. Hopefully that was 
pretty simple to follow and hopefully it made sense as far as why these allosteric effectors do what they do. Thanks for watching.